I'm going to take you through the finite difference modeling of translation lines. The finite difference technique is a very well known technique. It is used for solving what we call the boundary value problems. And boundary value problems are problems where a physical quantity within a certain enclosed space, let's say this is a, a boundary enclosing a certain space, the physical quantity within the uh, enclosed space is governed by a set of differential equations. At the same time, at the boundary that is encrossing uh, that space, the values of the physical quantity are known and constrained by known values. And therefore, we call those constraining values the boundary conditions. So, what we seek to solve in a boundary value problem is the distribution of the physical quantity within the enclosed space. And uh, one of the methods that we use uh, for this kind of solutions uh, is the finite difference technique. This is what we are going to see how we can actually use uh, the finite difference technique to solve transmission line problems. And first of all, we are going to see how uh, the transmission line problem itself qualifies to as a boundary value problem. In electrical engineering, transmission lines are used to transmit power from one point let's say from point A to point B. So uh, at point A what we do is to impose the power source which we call Vs and at point B is where it is being delivered to our load uh, which we call Zn. So in between uh, point A and point B is our transmission line that will connect those two points. And logically, it's taken to be a straight line of length L, where L is the total length of the transmission line. Why we say logically is because uh, the line does not have to be, uh, in reality, if you look at it physically, it doesn't have to be straight. But uh, logically, and for the purpose of the analysis, the line is uh, taken to be a straight line connecting point A and point B. As you can see, we have terminated our load uh, to the ground and our voltage source to the ground, but we could actually at the same time just uh, create a return path for the electric power from uh, the one point to the next. So now our line is actually going to look like this. And what we do, uh, we align one end of the line because it's a one dimensional problem with x is equal to zero and the other end with x is equal to m. Now the finite difference technique can be used to solve uh, both uniform uh, transmission lines on an uniform transmission lines. Uh, in the case of the uniform transmission line, uh, we mentioned before that uh, the material properties do not change as you move along the line. In the case of uh, an ununiform transmission line, the uh, material properties could change and therefore uh, this has a big effect in terms of uh, the solution uh, to the problem. It makes it a little bit more complicated in essence. Now, uh, this one dimensional problem, uh, the, what is happening on this end here, which we call the uh, receiving end, is known because the impedance ZL is actually known. What is happening on this end also is known because the, uh, vo the voltage source or the source voltage is known. So what we are actually going to solve for is the distribution of either the current or the voltage between point A and point B. So this is a boundary value problem. In, the sen in essence, the boundary is a, uh, the boundary edge of the boundary is point A and point B. And uh, um, what we need to do is to solve uh, the, vo the voltage distribution, which is the physical quantity that is not known uh, within this space. 
We know that the voltage distribution here is governed by the equation z squared v over dx squared is equals to z y v. Z being the impedance per unit length and y being the impedance per unit length of this transmission line. And uh, at the same time, we know that uh, uh, for uniform transmission line, z is constant, y is constant. For an uniform transmission line, z varies uh, uh, throughout uh, the length of this uh, transmission line. Therefore, for an uniform transmission line, this is z of x, uh, y of x times v. Because both z and y are functions of x, because they are varying as you move along the x-axis. So, uh, what we do in the case of the finite difference is to divide this line into n sections. Those sections may be equal or may not be equal. So, let's, let's first of all start by dividing that line. So, we call this section 1. Uh, this is section N. So, we call this section 2. Section 3. Uh, this is section I, and this is section uh, um, I minus 1. We, so we leave a gap here between to show that the other sections in between section I and section 3. So this is section 3, it's here, section I minus 1 starts there. You can put some dots here. And again, we leave some gap here to indicate that. Um, there are more sections between section I and uh, section N. So we have uh, divided this line into N sections. They don't have to be of equal length. So we can designate this to be of length delta x1, delta x2, delta x3, delta x i minus 1, delta x i, and uh, delta x n. The next thing that we do is to label uh, the, the, the end point of each of these sections. Uh, we call this uh, with the nodes. This is node number one, node number two, node number three, node number four. This will be node number uh, i. This this node here will be number i minus one. This will be node i. This will be i plus one, and this will be node n. This will be n plus 1. So clearly, uh, this will be n plus 1. The next thing that we are going to do is to label the voltages at the nodes, uh, starting with V1, V2, V3, V4, Vi minus 1, Vi, Vi plus 1, Vn, and Vn plus 1. Now, Vn plus 1, as you can see, is a known voltage uh, because Vn plus 1 is equal to Vs, the source voltage, and it's one of the constraining values that we use as our battery condition. So, again, uh, uh, we assume that uh, the distribution for the parameters uh, Zx and Yx, the impedance and the admittance, are known within each of these sections. So we can designate uh, the impedance at uh, node 1 to be Z1 and the admitters Y1. This is Z2, Y2, Z3, Y3, Z4, Y4, Z I minus 1, Y I minus 1, Z I, Y I, Z I plus 1, Y I plus 1. Uh, Zn, Yn, and Zn plus 1, Yn plus 1. Indeed, we only going to solve uh, for the voltages V1 to Vn, uh, because uh, we have already said that uh, Vn uh, plus 1 is known, and it's one of the constraining values. We'll see how we do that. So, with this kind of uh, model for the transmission line, now we are ready to go to the next stage where we see how we'll approximate uh, this second order uh, differential equation uh, with the node of voltages, uh, consecutive node of voltages, and the separation uh, between those voltages. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate first on what is happening on the eighth note, this section here. So I'm going to uh, blow it up a little bit so that uh, we can see it in a bit more detail. And then uh, from here we are able to see uh, how we can approximate uh, the, the second order differential equation and uh, how we are going to be, to be able to form uh, the set of linear equations which we actually solve, we use for solving the uh, node of voltages V1 up to Vn. Of course we assume that if you know the voltages V1 uh, uh, up to Vn, then uh, we should be able to uh, design the voltage distribution between uh, node A and node B. Now, uh, what we do is that uh, we analyze the line itself and then determine what kind of uh, no the number of sections, uh, what value N can take. If the line is uniform, you can use as few of our sections as possible. But if line is heavy and uniform, then you find that we tend to have uh, these uh, points uh, close to each other. And in fact, uh, to get the voltage distribution, uh, if the, vo the voltages are very close to each other, it's no problem. You can actually use a linear approximation in between the, the, uh, the nodes. And uh, if uh, uh, the voltage is varying very rapidly, of course, you tend to uh, make the nodes become very close to each other. So I'm going to concentrate on uh, what is happening on the eighth node. Uh, this is the eighth node, uh, where we have a node of voltage VI, and uh, this is the I, I minus one node, and this is I plus one node. So we have a node of voltage VI plus one, and here we have a node of voltage VI minus one. So what we want to do is to see how we can approximate this second order differential equation. Uh, with the differences uh, between those voltages or not the voltages. So to begin with, we can write dv dx uh, at node i minus 1 of this section uh, at this point to be equal to uh, vi minus vi minus 1 over delta xi minus 1. That is the dv dx at section uh, i minus 1. Again, we can write dv dx to be equal to vi plus 1 minus vi over delta xi. That is at section i. So this is section i. This is section i minus 1. So you can see that we are approximating uh, the first derivative of the voltage with the differences between the node voltages and their separation. For the second derivative, the first thing that we are going to assume is that uh, the first derivative, this derivative here at section i minus 1, is centered at the position uh, midway between node i and node i minus 1. Uh, for the sec this derivative dv dx, we are going to assume it is centered in between node i and node i plus 1. So what we are going to do is uh, to get the second derivative at node i, we are going to subtract dv dx at node i, at section i, minus dv dx at section i minus 1, and then we divide by the separation between these two, and you can see this will be delta xi over 2, and this is delta xi minus 1, uh, this, this section here, is delta xi minus 1 over 2. So here is delta xi minus 1 over 2 plus delta xi over 2. So this comes to uh, this minus that divided by these two. So you can see this will be uh, vi plus 1 minus vi over delta xi minus vi minus vi minus 1 over delta xi minus 1 all divided by uh, this which is uh, delta xi minus 1 plus delta xi all divided by 2. So this is approximates now uh, the second uh, derivative d squared v dx squared uh, which is equal to zy times v. 
In fact, because we are determining uh, the, de the second derivative, this is actually d squared v over dx squared at node i. So, and this must be equal to, uh, this second derivative must be equal to uh, zyv at node i. So this is equals to um, zyv at node i, which will be zi, as you can see this zi yi times vi. The next thing that we are going to do is to rearrange these terms and come up with a, a linear equation uh, in uh, vi plus 1, vi and vi minus 1. We have seen that at node i, the second order differential equation, e squared v over dx squared, that is at node i, is equal to this quantity here. We can further rationalize this uh, as follows. We multiply this on this side and we multiply these two together. So what we'll have is uh, uh, vi plus 1 minus vi into delta xi minus 1. We multiply this term up here minus vi minus vi minus 1 into delta xi is equals to zi yi vi into um, delta xi minus 1 plus delta xi over 2 times the product of these two times delta xi, delta xi minus 1. So what we can do is uh, uh, to expand this further. And uh, we can multiply by 2 here. So we have 2 delta xi minus 1, vi plus 1, uh, minus uh, 2 into delta xi minus 1 plus delta xi uh, into vi plus 2 delta xi vi minus 1 is equals to zi yi vi into delta xi minus 1 plus delta xi uh, into multiplied by delta xi, delta xi minus 1. So we can bring, you can see this has uh, vi, and this is vi, so we can bring this on this side. And in fact, you can factor out, uh, as you bring this uh, to the left side, uh, left hand side, you can actually factor out this. So we can make this as uh, 2 uh, delta xi minus 1, vi plus 1, uh, minus 2 uh, plus zi yi delta xi delta xi minus 1 um, into delta xi minus 1 plus delta xi or into vi uh, plus 2 delta xi uh, vi minus 1 is equals to 0. So you can see now we have a, a, a linear equation in uh, vi plus 1, uh, vi and vi minus 1. So at node i, we have generated uh, an equation in vi plus 1, uh, vi and vi minus 1. In fact, we can write this equation as a, b, c as a, in a matrix form times vi minus 1, vi, vi plus 1 is equals to 0. And uh, what we can, we know that a will be equal to this term here, 2 delta xi, b is equals to this term here, which is minus 2 plus zi, yi, delta xi minus 1, delta xi, into delta xi minus 1 plus delta xi and c is equals to 2 delta xi minus 1. So what we do is uh, we repeat this exercise 
at each of the end nodes, starting from node 1 to node n. And then we generate a set of n linear equations. And then we can now uh, group those linear equations and create a matrix multiplication A, an n by n matrix times uh, V. These are the node of voltages, so the column of n node of voltages is equals to the column matrix 0. And then we build this matrix A by uh, setting the element AI I minus 1 to be equal to A at node I and AI I to be equal to B and AI I plus 1 to be equal to C. So at each of these, uh, again, let me just emphasize that we repeat this exercise at each of the end nodes, starting from node 1 to node n. And uh, we generate, at each of those uh, nodes, we generate uh, this matrix multiplication uh, A, B, C times V, I minus 1, V, I, and V, I plus 1 is equal to 0. And then what we do is that we build this matrix, an n by n matrix, by designating uh, A, I, minus a i i minus one to be equal to a a i i to be equal to to b and a i i plus one to be equal to c so you can see that we have an n by n matrix which we multiply by our lot of voltages uh, v1 to vn uh, giving us a uh, zero next we are going to see how we impose the boundary conditions at node one at node n and in fact i also show you how we impose other boundary conditions if there is a a discontinuity in the line. Now, having seen how the linear matrices are developed uh, in the case of the finite difference equation, uh, we had said that this is a boundary value problem. In essence, we had said that um, the transmission line is bounded uh, from one extremity to the other extremity. Here it's bounded and uh, we attached a voltage source Vs. On the, this side is bounded and we attached uh, an impedance ZL. So these two form the boundary conditions at the extremities. So we are going to see how these boundary conditions are constrained I uh, on our matrices. Now, the first thing that uh, we need to look at is uh, if you look at uh, the way we developed the nodes uh, or the model of the line or the receiving end. We see this is connected at node one, and then uh, we go to the next node and the third node. Uh, then, uh, of course, this is the turn path. So we see this is delta x1, the separation between the nodes, and this was delta x2. And here we define the voltage v1, here v2, and v3. So these are the node of voltages that we seek to determine. From this model of the transmission line which we developed earlier, we know that the drop of the voltage along the line is given by the differential equation dv dx is equals to minus z, this being the characteristic impedance and the current at any position. So we can now again approximate dv dx, the drop of the voltage at node 1, uh, with uh, v2 minus v1 over delta x1. Then uh, we can equate this uh, equation here. So we say uh, v2 minus v1 over delta x1 is equals to minus z1 because this is at node 1. z is equals to z1 times the current uh, i at node 1. And because the current is deemed to be flowing this way, this is i, uh, at this point, because uh, we know the load impedance, the current that is flowing in the backward direction is just minus V1 over ZL. So this can be equated to minus Z1 
into uh, minus uh, V1 over ZM. So from these equations, you can again rationalize and you see that uh, V2 uh, into ZM uh, minus V1 into ZM uh, plus delta X1 uh, Z1 is equals to zero. So again, you can see that uh, uh, we have a matrix equation and uh, we can let uh, A11 to be equal to minus ZL plus delta X1 Z1 and A12 is equal to ZL. Whereas at no that you are determining three entries uh, for the matrix A, we know that at node one we can only have two entries, and uh, this is now uh, confirmed uh, by what we have determined here, and uh, after applying the boundary condition. In order to apply the boundary condition at the uh, setting end. What we do is we consider the, the model uh, or the transmission line and considering what is happening at the nodes n minus 1, n and n plus 1. And uh, you recall that uh, we already developed uh, the matrix multiplication A, B, C, where A, B and C are determined. Uh, v, n minus 1, V, n, uh, V, n plus 1 is equal to 0. Now we know that at the sending end, uh, Vn plus 1 is equal to Vs. So if we carry out this multiplication, we can write that Avn minus 1 plus Bvn is equal to minus C uh, Vs. And uh, you can see that we have a linear equation with two unknowns, Vn minus 1 and Vn. So now what we can do is to um, set the values for the matrix A, A, N, n minus 1 is equal to a, and a, n, n is equal to uh, b. And then, uh, as, as you can see, the matrix equation which we had as a into, into b is equal to 0 will change now, and this will become a into b will be equal to b where the entries of B are all zero, except the last entry, which will be minus C times Vs. We said earlier that uh, the finite difference method can be used for solving uh, problems for non-uniform or uniform transmission lines. So what we have done so far, it can be used for solving actually for both types of lines. But that means, uh, but this method only applies where the line is actually, uh, the, or the material properties are continuous or they are varying continuously. In case there are discontinuities with the materials, then it means that we have to apply other boundary conditions. For example, consider our line, this is the load, ZL, terminating the line, then the line is uh, starting from the sending end where we have connected our source voltage. So if there are material discontinuities, let's say at uh, no die, uh, let's say the material, there are material discontinuities. In fact, we just consider piecewise a smooth case. So where here we have Z, uh, uh, this is Z2, uh, Y2, and here we have Z1, Y1. So you can see clearly there will be a discontinuity. Uh, at this point. So what I'm going to do is to, I'm going to show you how we apply the boundary conditions in case we have this kind of discontinuities. So considering the model of our transmission line, we will assume that this is happening at the ith node and then what we do is uh, this is uh, node i. Uh, here we have node i plus 1. If you recall the model of our transmission line, this is i minus 1. This is i plus 
I plus one. Here we have a uh, z uh, i minus one, and here we have z i. And uh, here again we have voltage v i. Here is v i plus one, and here is v i minus one. So we'll still retain the same uh, model of our transmission line, and you see now how uh, these three voltages are related to each other. So this uh, distance here will be delta x i minus one. The separation here will be uh, delta x i. So what we we know is that uh, even though uh, there is material discontinuity, the current uh, across here is continuous. And we say we know from the equation dv over dx is equal to minus z i. We can compute the current i. i of x is equal to minus 1 over z. This is the characteristic impedance uh, times dv over dx. So what we are going to do is uh, to approximate uh, this current on one side of the discontinuity uh, with the differences and the other side of uh, discontinuity with the differences and then we are going to equate the two currents together. And clearly you can see that what this means is that vi minus vi minus 1 over uh, delta x i minus 1 uh, multiplied by 1 over minus z i minus 1 is equals to minus 1 over z i vi plus 1 minus vi all over delta x i. You can rationalize uh, this uh, uh, equation, and what you come up with is that uh, vi plus 1 into uh, delta x i minus 1 into z i minus 1 minus vi into delta x i minus 1 z i minus 1 plus delta x i z i. Uh, plus v i minus 1 into delta x i z i is equals to 0. So again you can see that uh, we have a linear equation with three unknowns, just like we had uh, for the three consecutive nodes. But the values now are very different uh, because the constraining is going to reflect what is happening at the boundary or the discontinuity that is uh, uh, at the boundary. So what I'm going to do next is to give an example and show you how we can develop matrices uh, for this kind of a lane. I'm going to show you how we constrain the boundary conditions at the receiving end and at the setting end and in case there is a material discontinuity. I'm going to give you an example of how to work out uh, the finite defense solution to a composite transmission line. What I mean by a composite transmission line is a line made of three sections uh, joined uh, back to back. So consider a transmission line terminated with a non voltage as a non impedance of 20 ohms and of length um, 4.6 meters and driven by a source voltage Vs uh, is equals to 100 volts. Uh, this line is made of three sections. The first section, 1.8 meters long. The second section, 1.2 meters long. And the third section, 1.6 meters long. The first section has characteristic impedance Z is equal to 0 0.5 ohms per meter. And the meters y is equal to 0 0.5 ohms per meter. The second section has the same admittance, y is equal to 0 0.5 ohms per meter. And a characteristic impedance z is equal to 1 ohm per meter. The th that section has uh, the same uh, admittance, y is equal to 0 0.5 ohms per meter. And a characteristic impedance z is equal to 0 0.2 ohms per meter. 
So what I'm going to do next is to divide uh, this part here into 12 sections each of uh, uh, 0 0.15 meters. I'll divide this one into 8 sections each of 0 0.15 meters and this side uh, part here will be divided into 8 sections each of 0 0.2 meters. So you can see that in total I'm going to have uh, 12 plus 8 plus 8 and I'll have 28 sections. So for my the purpose of my finite defense analysis, this line will be divided into uh, 28 sections. So again we say that uh, with 28 sections we have 29 nodes, but we know that we don't have to solve for the last node, so we are be solving uh, 28 by 28 matrix, or we'll be solving uh, for 28 node voltages. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'll show you how we develop uh, the matrices uh, for each of the three consecutive nodes, and also at the node 1 for the parallel connection, node 2, and this node here, which will be a weak node number 13, and this will be node number 21. How we are going to apply, this will be node number 29. How we compose the matrices for each of the nodes, at each of the nodes. Starting with node number 1. Uh, node number 13, which is very important. Which is uh, forming the where the first part of the line is the next. And node number 21. Let me put it here, 21, this is 13, this is 1, and then of course uh, the second last node here will be 28. I'm going to illustrate using Excel worksheets how to compose uh, the set of linear equations for the composite line that I've described. Excel worksheets can be quite a path tools for illustration and for this kind of illustration that I'm going to show here and even for getting actual solutions when the number of nodes are not very many. If for example you're using less than 100 nodes, Excel worksheets are good enough. I know many of you may be familiar with MATLAB or uh, matrix inversion but I'll show you how you can easily invert uh, the matrices that we generate here using the Excel worksheets. Specifically, it's because the matrix that we generate is a, a tridiagonal matrix, which means that only the three leading diagonals are filled and the rest of the values are zero. So it will be very easy for me to be able to illustrate how we can uh, use Gaussian elimination to solve this kind of a tridiagonal uh, problem. The line comprises of uh, three uniform sections that are added back to back. The first section, has uh, 12 nodes. The second section has 8 nodes and in that section has 8 nodes. The first thing that we need to do is to label uh, the nodes. So this would be entry will be for the node, the height node. Then the length of the section beginning from that node or subsection uh, within the uh, the piecewise transmission line beginning with that node and then the, uh, the impedance per unit length for that uh, section and for that node for that purpose and the admittance per unit length then we know we are going to generate uh, three variables A, B and C which are going to form uh, the entries to the matrix that I showed you earlier the n by n matrix that I showed you earlier now you can see that uh, these are the elements of the diagonal matrix. So this will be the elements uh, of the leading diagonal. In fact, precisely uh, B will be the entry AII, uh, A will be the entry AII minus one, and C will be the entry AII plus one. Uh, for the first section, you start from node one, and then we go to node two, and then uh, we go all the way up to node 12. In fact, we can mark this with a different color just to remind ourselves that the, this is the first piecewise section of the composite line. 
coming up at the end. The second section starts with node number 13 and goes all the way up to node number 20. In fact, we can mark this also with a different color just to remind ourselves to be in the second as a piecewise section or the second part of the line. The third section starts at node number 21, then goes to number 22, and all the way to number 28. And again, we mark this with a different color just to remind ourselves that this is a third uh, part of the line. Or the composite line. So we said that the first part is a 1.8 meters long and divided into 12 parts. So each subsection, so each part will be 0 0.15 meters. They are all equal. Now the next section uh, was 1.2 meters long. So this again was 0 0.15 meters. For each section. So the third part of the line um, was 1.6 meters long and, is, and we have divided into eight equal sections so each section will be 0 0.2 meters long. And the, uh, for the first section we know that the impedance per unit length is 0 0.5 ohms per meter. The second section, the impedance is 1 ohm per meter, all the way up to 20. The third section, the impedance is 0 0.2 ohms per meter. As for the admittance, uh, the admittance is 0 0.5 moles per meter for the whole of the three parts of the composite line. And this we now, uh, you can see that we have modeled, we have a, a complete model out of our, of our transmission line. So the impedance by unit length at node 1, the admittance by unit length at node 1, the length of the section starting from node 1 to node 2 of course, and therefore uh, this gives a very good model of our line. So what we seek to do is to generate the uh, A, B and C like I had explained earlier. For the purposes of consistency, the L, the length of each section of the line, is actually what we had labeled delta xi. And I'm going to start uh, by computing uh, zi minus 1 and delta xi minus 1 for each section, and zi and uh, uh, delta xi for each section. Because we start the computations at node 1, we don't have z0 and delta x0, so we leave this as blank. For this, uh, zi and delta xi will just be equal to the product of uh, this uh, times this and this is going to be repeated all the way uh, through to node number 28. For zi minus 1 we start at the second node, in fact it is just what we computed previously and this continues all the way up to node number 28. I showed you that uh, the entry for node 1 for A11 would be equal to minus into brackets uh, the load impedance plus uh, Z1 times delta Xi. We saw that C is equal to ZL, which was 20, and uh, A because we are starting uh, from uh, 1, 1, did not have any value, so we can give it a 0. For the second entry, we saw that A was given by uh, 2 times delta xi, which is this one, and the C was given by 2 times delta xi minus 1, which is this one. For B, it was given by minus delta xi plus delta xi minus 1 multiplied by 2 plus zi times yi times 
delta xi times delta xi minus 1. And this is repeated all the way up node number 12. At node number 13, you saw that uh, the entry A was given by uh, zi xi, which is this. Entry C was given by zi minus 1 delta xi minus 1. The entry B was given by minus uh, this plus this. Again, uh, for the entries uh, 14 to 20, you repeat like what we had done previously here. And it goes all the way to uh, entry number 20. Entry number 21, we do like what we have done for this. And entry number 22 up to 28, we repeat like we have done for this. Or they have to enter number 27. For entry number 28, A and B are going to be as uh, in this previous uh, entry, but we don't have a C because uh, our matrix is at uh, or N is at 28. So actually, we just repeat this for that and leave it at that. So now we can see that we have formed all the entries uh, for the tridiagonal matrix. Uh, from uh, A11 to ANN. So this element here is ANN, this is A11. If you want to write uh, the end by end matrix fully, the first entry AI11 is actually this value here. You can just put it here equals this. A12 will be equal to this. Uh, A21 will be equal to this value. So we can enter, enter A21 here. A22 will be this term here. A33 will be this term here. And you can repeat this, uh, like for example, if you want to go to A31, uh, that will be zero. A32, will be this term here, A33, which is uh, the middle value, will be this term here, and A34 will be this term here. All the values are zero, so this will be zero all the way up to 28. This will be zero all the way up to 28, and this will start with zero, we will be all the way up to 28. And this also will be zero all the way up to 28. And therefore you can see how the matrix is actually getting composed. This goes all the way to 28. This goes all the way to 28. And then you can fill the other values. In fact, uh, up to uh, node number 12, these are the same. So you can actually continue copying them uh, here up to node number 12. So you can see you can come up with a 28 by 28 matrix. You do not need to relate the whole of matrix in this kind of a way. We can just uh, use the entries as we have worked them out here, A, B, A, B, A, B and C. And uh, the next thing that we're going to do is to compose the vector B. Uh, because if you recall, uh, the matrix A times B is equals to B. And B is equals to 0 uh, all the way up to num uh, node number 27. But at node number 28, we saw that B is equals to minus 0 0.4 times the source voltage which was 100. This now becomes a column matrix uh, B. So now we have the completely linear set of equation 
uh, comprising of ABC uh, into v, VI minus 1, VI, VI plus 1 is equal to 0 in this case for the first uh, uh, entry, all the way up to entry number 28. I'm going now to paste those values here and we see how we can do the quotient elimination uh, to obtain uh, the desired values of uh, the node of voltages. If you recall that our end by end matrix looks like this. So what we are going to do is to eliminate uh, uh, 0 0.3 to begin with. Then uh, we now using this value here. And the way to do it is to multiply the whole of this row with minus 20.075 uh, divided by 0 0.3. And then we subtract the first row. So what we can do is uh, this is equals to, if we take this to be the first row, so this be, being the first entry that we want to eliminate, what we do is we multiply the whole of this row with minus 20.075 divided by 0 0.3 and then subtract the, the row above. So in fact, this is just going to be minus 20.075 divided by the one that we want to eliminate here. We subtract, uh, we multiply this again by 0 0.3 and subtract what is above here. And we repeat the same for this entry. So this will be equal to this divided by this multiplied by what we want to eliminate. Uh, this one, this element here, and we subtract what is above it, which is 20, which is uh, here, it's on this side. Similarly, we repeat that this is equals to this over this uh, multiplied by this minus what is above it because we are removing this value here so nothing is above it and this is like what is appearing on that side so this is what we get and we repeat this exercise for the after node number 28 well, this is what we get the same uh, elimination as was being done should uh, also be carried out uh, for B. So the first entry remains the same, which is equal to this. The second entry, however, uh, becomes uh, this divided by this multiplied by this minus what was above it, which is this one. And that uh, Exercise is repeated all the way up to uh, load number 28. To solve for the load voltages, we start with the last load voltage, uh, which will be equal to uh, B divided by A and N. For V min N minus 1, that will be equal to um, this minus. this multiplied by this divided by this and this is repeated backwards all the way up to entry number one and you can see clearly now uh, we have the entries for all the node voltages from node number 1 to node number 29 because at node number 29 don't forget that the voltage was equal to a heart rate. If we do a quick plot with Excel, it will look like this. So this is the respective node and this is the, uh, the voltage. You know at node number 29 the voltage is actually 100 volts. And you can see clearly that uh, at uh, node number 21, there's a discontinuity on the line and also on the curves or the distribution of the voltages. Again, you can see that at this node number 13, there's still further discontinuity. And uh, the, the voltage drops uh, from the high of 100 volts at the setting end to a low of 20 volts at the receiving end. So we'll be able to compare this method with the finite element method and also the series methods once we have also developed them.
we try to solve the same problem so that we can see uh, how the convergence happens uh, for those other two methods. This will now mark the end of the second part of our lectures. In this part of the lectures, we are able to see how the finite difference method works. We are able to see how the differential equations are approximated by differences. And we are able to see how a set of linear equations is uh, composed for a certain number of nodes that you define for your transmission line. We are able to see how you develop a matrix equation. And in fact, using Excel worksheets, we are able to see how that kind of a matrix equation is inverted. In the subsequent part of the lectures, I'll be able to develop the finite, different, finite element method and the series method and be able to compare with the finite difference method that we have developed here. In fact, I'll apply uh, the same, the, the, the two methods to the same example that we have seen uh, for the finite difference method. Now I'll stop here and I'm back on the third part of the lectures, which is developing the finite element technique for solving the transmission line problem.